So back to the transcripts. Let's get to this. So, I'm Dr. Good morning. I'm Dr. Lisa Gavin, L I S A G A V I N. Doctor, how are you employed? I am a forensic pathologist. This was a pathologist. I'm going to have to look that word up. Pathologist. Pathologist. Let's see. Path. Pathologist. Pathologist. Oops. I know that word. <laughs> A scientist who studies the causes and effects of diseases, especially one who examines laboratory samples of body tissue for diagnosis and forensic purposes. Pathologist. I am a forensic pathologist, medical examiner here in Clark County. How long have you been a forensic pathologist? A little over 13 years, going to 14 soon. And how long have you been in Clark County? The same. Can you generally describe your education background and licensing? Is that a question? Can I? Yes. How about will you? Yes, yes. I went to medical school at the University of Connecticut School of Medicine. I did a pathological pathology. Pathology. What is this word? Pathology. Pathology. That's what it is. Pathology. Uh, pathology residency at Hartford Hospital in Connecticut. I did a surgical pathology fellowship at Hartford Hospital in Connecticut. I did a forensic pathology fellowship at the officer, I mean, at the office of the medical investigator in New Mexico. And then I came here to Clark County. I have a medical license to practice here in the state of Nevada, and I am a board certified an anonic anonymic. What is this word? Anonymic and an I don't know. Anatomic. What the hell does anatomic mean? Anatomic. Anatomic definition. Relating to bodily structure. Okay. And I'm a board certified in anatomic path pathology and forensic pathology. I'm going to imagine that you didn't hold all, well, certainly didn't have a license to practice medicine in the state of Nevada in 1996. Correct. Okay. Since you've been at the medical examiner's office, did you learn of a former medical examiner by the name of Dr. Jordan? Yes. And have you had on occasion had to review his work as well as the underlying documentation to form your own opinions related to cause and manner of death? Yes. Can you estimate how many times you have to do this? Can you estimate how many times you had to do it that way before? Oh, shit.
<laughs> you know, it's crazy. <laughs> can, can you estimate how many times you have to do? You have. <laughs> I'm sorry, I got a text that made me laugh. Uh, can you estimate how many times you had to do it that way before? Probably it would estimate to two dozen or so. Okay. So I'm going to direct your attention to an autopsy which was conducted on an individual that was identified as Tupac Shakur, AKA Lizane Crooks. Were you asked to review certain documentation of photography in order to form your own opinion as to the cause and manner of the death of Mr. Shakur? Yes. Okay, let's talk about what you had. Did you have a report did you have a report from an investigator that had responded to the hospital but when Mr. Shakur died? Yes. And did you also have an autopsy report that was dictated by Dr. Robert Jordan? Yes. Now, back in 1996, did the medical examiner's office document their autopsies with photographs in the same way that they do today? No. What did the officer... What did the Office of the Medical Examiner really have for documentation of photography? They did a combination of either Polaroids or they actually had film in the cameras at the time. Based upon that, did I supply you a, well, basically a link to the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department's crime scene analyst photographs from the autopsy? Yes. And did you have an opportunity to review all of those? Yes. After reviewing all of those, were you able to form an opinion as the cause and manner of death? Yes. So I'm going to go through a few of these exhibits that somebody else already laid the foundation for. This is the grand jury exhibit number nine. Is this one of the photographs that you were able to look at during the course of your forming your opinion? Yes. And essentially, this was an overall photograph of Mr. Shakur on September 13th, 1996. Correct. Did you learn during the course of your review of this that he had actually been shot or injured seven days before? Yes. And that he had a medical intervention. And there's evidence in this photograph of substantial medical intervention. Yes. So let's move on to during the so let's move on to, during the course of your review, I want you to start with the top down. Essentially, there was some pretty obvious medical intervention, but was there a gunshot wound to the chest? Yes. And can you see generally where that gunshot wound is identified here in photograph number 10? Yes. Can you actually, can you, Actually, I have a little toy for you. There's a pointer. Can you point out for us generally the area where the entrance wound was? Yes. It's here on the right lateral aspect of the chest near the axilla. I believe that's the word. Okay. And did you learn the path of that particular wound? Yes. And where did it go? That wound entered the chest cavity, damaged the right lung, and then ended up just in the in anterior aspect of the chest beneath the sternal notch. The sternal notch is right where you can feel the top of your chest and the midline kind of where your clavicle and your collarbones come together, and that's your sternal notch. And so underneath that is where the projectile, and so underneath that is where the projectile was recovered. This one was recovered during the autopsy procedure. Okay, so, okay. And so the other items we see here, the large stitching, the stitching down the stomach, as well as the stitching over here, all that appears to be medical intervention, correct? I mean, inter medical intervention, correct. Let's move on to grand jury exhibit number 11. There's, some, there's several ones for the hands. So I'm just going to go 
top down. There appears to be two injuries on the buttocks flank area of Mr. Shakur, correct? Yes. Let's talk about the lower one. Based on your review, what did what did that appear to you to be? This is, in a, is an abrasion area, and this does not penetrate into the body. There's no evidence of that within the photographs or within the autopsy report. So this is something struck that area and caused a scrape into the skin that you can see here. Do you have an opinion as to what that is? It could be, it could possibly be a fragment of a projectile or a projectile itself. It could also possibly be uh, be an intermediary object. I think that's the word. Intermediary. Intermediary. Let me check that. Yeah, I said that right. Intermediary, which means a person who acts as a link between people or in order to try to bring about an agreement or recollection as a mediator or go between. It's a go between in this situation. It could also be a possible, it could also possibly, possibly be. Uh, Intermediary object. An intermediary object often occurs if, like, a gunfire goes between an object and the individual or target that it is struck. So, for example, if the gunfire occurs through an automobile, there may be fragments of an automobile that end up heading into the individual after the bullet or projectile has hit the car. So it's possible that you're either dealing with a fragment from any kind of object that's between the muzzle and the individual or whether or not it's actual or whether or not it's actually the projectile itself that hits the body but doesn't penetrate into the body. And then right kind of in the center of the screen on his right flank, on Mr. Shakur's right flank, there's a fairly large injury of some sort. Do you, did you form an opinion as to what that is? That is his right thigh. Right thigh? Yeah. You said flank. And this is his right thigh. So on the lateral aspect of his right thigh is an entrance gunshot wound. Can you tell me the path of that wound? Yes. This gunshot wound then perforates into the, into the thigh and then goes upwards into the abdominal cavity. Injures several, injures several of the small intestines and then comes to the rest in the, in, in the interior abdominal wall. This projectile is removed during the surgery and is documented as being removed from the surgery. So this one was removed during the surgery. The one that was at the sternal notch was still present at the time of the autopsy. Correct. And then, well, you can see a little bit here. I'm going to move to move on to grand jury exhibit number 12. And on his right hand, did there appear to be an injury? Yes. And did you form an opinion as to what that was? Yes. He has a through and through gunshot wound of his kind of a third or fourth finger, depending on whether you count the thumb as the first. And this is a through and through gunshot wound in, his, in, in this finger. So it appears that Mr. Shakur had two penetrating gunshot wounds, and one perfor perforating gunshot wound. Correct. Damn, Pac got hit up fucking a lot of times, man. Correct. 
And based upon your review of the of the records of the Clark County's coroner's office, as well as the photographs in this, did you form an opinion as to the cause of the death of Mr. Shakur? Yes. What was that? He died of multiple gunshot wounds. And did you have an opinion as to the manner of the death? Yes. And what was that? Homicide. Now, normally if someone dies immediately and gets taken to the hospital or taken directly to the Clark County coroner's office, there's a toxicology done. And we know what's in their system at the time they were shot, correct? Yes. There was a toxicology done on Mr. Shakur, correct? Yes. But that would have been taken seven days after he had actually got his shot. Yes. The blood was tested was that, yes, the blood that was tested was that taken at, it was taken at an autopsy. So this is after hospitalization. And you, and in your review of that, was there any, and in your review of that, was there anything other than what appears to be medical intervention or medical type stuff he would have received at the hospital within his system? No, there's nothing else except stuff that he, he would have received at the medical, we received at the hospital, in my opinion. Okay, did I ask you this? Do you have an opinion as the manner of the death of Mr. Shakur? Yes. And what was that? Homicide. Thank you. That completes my questions. Does the grand jury have any questions? I have a question. Oh, here? Okay. So actually, what killed him is the gunshot to the chest. He had an injury also to his abdominal organs as well. So both gunshot wounds would be related to his death. So it's multiple gunshot wounds. Okay, thank you. And you said they all went up. Trajectory was going up instead of sideways, correct? The traject, he got shot here and you said it was up here. The trajectory for both of the gunshot wounds, the one that's from the axilla and the one that's on the lateral aspect of the right thigh go essentially anatomically is that the word Ana, anatomically let's see oh anatomically uh the wu tang obama atomically <laughs> anatomically back to the front and then from right to left and then all go upward huh the trajectory for both of those gunshot wounds the one that's from the axilla and the one that's on the lateral aspect of the right thigh go essentially anatomically back to the front and then from the right to the left and then all go upward. God damn, the bullets was traveling. And that would depend on what position of Mr. Shakur was when he got shot. The position of his body was also the position of the weapons that's firing at him as well. So obviously they can be very dynamic situation. So you don't know where they are exactly. Thank you. And I'm sorry, the lower one, would that be coming from the rear or the side? If we can put up that photo again, please, of the right thigh. I don't remember the exhibit number. It's 11. 11, please. 11 is the center wound that you see here. Right. So that one, so that's definitely side, but the other one is coming from further back if you go which one is which one this one no on the chest 
which I think is your second exhibit. I don't remember the one of that one, the number of that one. This one, yes. So in this, okay. So just slightly back from then, because you also see in this one, the right lateral aspect of the right thigh in this one. And you can see that there's almost a line with each of the, which, which each other on the body for where the one near the axilla is relative to the one that's on the thigh. So in terms of the body at anatomical, atomic, anatomical location, that's why I just was trying to, that's what I was just trying to get is, yeah, where they are relative to each other is kind of almost pretty straight in line with each other and they both have similar trajectory through the body. Okay, thank you. On this one, it's kind of entered here, like under the arm, sort of here. Yes. Okay. That's the one. Okay, that one that's under Neath the scar or the stitching, that one, what, what what caused that? Is that all related? Those three things, are they all three related? No, they're not. So you can see the staples that are going underneath the right nipple. Right. And then just below, that is... Sutured, what is me? Sutured, stitched up with a structure. Okay. And then just below, that is a sutured area, a stitched up area. That was a chest tube. Oh, okay. It wasn't, they, the, they sutured the, the chest tube. They sutured the chest. They sutured the chest tube site. It was due to medical intervention. Yes, medical intervention. Yes, cool. Okay, because they had gone in there. They had to evacuate almost two liters worth of blood, and then he still had some blood in the chest cavity, even at the at the time that he was autopsied how long was he in the hospital for almost six days so in the course of the six days man the bullet was never recovered it was only recovered after he died the bullet that was from the thigh was recovered in the abdomen when they did that abdomen surgery god damn bro the bullet traveled from his thigh all the way up to his abdomen Pac definitely was trying to jump in the back seat or move it for that bullet to be traveling that much. And the bullet that was in the sternal's notch, they didn't recover because that bullet, I believe, my impression would be that, that they're trying to keep him stabilized. And they had taken his lung out. The right lung had been removed because it was injured. And then they had tied everything off and they tried to stabilize him so they didn't go digging, if you will, to retrieve the projectile. Okay, thank you. Any more questions?